the Ashtavakra Gita says, there are no rules, renunciation or meditation for one who is pure receptivity in nature. Now, think about the implications of what the Ashtavakra Gita is saying. It says that all we need is pure receptivity. Even meditation, a formal act of meditation, is not needed. Receptivity itself is meditation. Renunciation is not needed. Receptivity itself is renunciation. Rules are not needed. Receptivity itself leads us to a different kind of discipline, to a different kind of potential realization. Great opportunities start arising in life. The subtle dance of your deepest energies find true expression and fulfillment in whatever you do in life. So your very psyche, your very internal comes into a deep rhythm with higher truth. Your energy is released into realizing its highest potential, into fulfillment, into contentment and so on. Mostly our energies are released in so many ways which do not necessarily create good things for us. Our energies are dissipated and at the root of all things, says the Ashtavakra Gita, is our ability to be receptive. Receptivity is what? Receptivity is using the moment to attain to great clarity in consciousness, to attain to a situation where you understand that you are passing through a great opportunity called life. And by understanding and appreciating this opportunity to experience life, your innermost core is open to the higher. Your innermost core is opened to universal energy. Your innermost core is opened to a cosmic experience, the ecstatic experience of self. And once you taste that, then you are freed from all the peripheral things. You see, power, position, religion, ideology, politics, all that is external. There is absolutely no need to identify with that. Dissolve all that. That is all comes and goes that dissolves. What remains is understanding. What remains is the transformative nature of your receptiveness. Be like the tree receptive to the rain, receptive to the sunshine, in whatever circumstances it nourishes itself. Whatever happens, it nourishes itself. You see, in Chinese Taoism, there is an expression about how we are to become like little reeds floating on the river. It is no use swimming against the river. Move with the flow of the river. And that way, you are able to move towards higher fulfillment, higher truth, higher degree of successful living. And in Vedanta, similarly, it says that we should be like a blade of grass. The blade of grass, even if the storm comes, the blade of grass does not break. It has flexibility. It is receptive to rain. It is receptive to any storm. It does not get uprooted. It is able to bend. It is able to be in its self-nature, but at the same time, it is able to withstand things with a great strength. So that is the way to cultivate the power of spirit, the strength of spirit. Be open to all things, that is receptivity. That way you relate to life in a much deeper way. That way your roots become more embedded in the richness of existence. And you attain a clarity of vision, you become a drashta, you become a rishi. 
what is a rishi a rishi is the drashta one who can see clearly one who is receptive to whatever comes that is the state of the realized one be receptive to whatever comes today there may be sunshine tomorrow there may be rain day after it may be bitterly cold but in whatever weather whatever climate you exist whatever comes you have to be receptive to it accept it and when once you do that you are able to find that the fragrance of your being is not dependent upon these changing circumstances the fragrance of your being is always of the transcendent always of the mystical the divine the higher and so understanding this your very being is transported to a different plane of understanding a different plane of harmony a different plane of power and strength your mind becomes empowered in this way your very roots of being get empowered in this way suddenly you'll find that all the tenseness in your being is evaporating suddenly you find that the flowers are always in bloom the season keeps changing so for a while there may not be foliage on the tree the winter has come the autumn has come but the whole cycle of nature will take it back to a spring a spring time when the tree will blossom with flowers again so the tree accepts the coming of autumn the coming of winter it knows that tomorrow will be another time another space spring time will be able to help it recreate recreate its foliage that is the creative attitude so the ashtavakra gita talks about how we can naturally flower in life how true joy is inevitable if we are receptive how anxieties can disappear tensions can disappear if we are receptive but if you are non receptive to what existence brings then you are in a problem because your mind is thinking of an ideal situation but life is not ideal the outer circumstances of life are not ideal the mystical reality of life is a different dimension identify with that not with the changing reality so in vedanta it is said do not identify with the moving clouds in the sky they come and go identify with the greatness of the sky behind it the greatness of space behind it that unchanging space that blue because that is supposed to signify the higher reality the what is behind the curtain don't identify the movie being projected on the movie screen no the images come and go remember they are just moving images that is the way of thought that is the way of our feelings they come and go that is also the way of human circumstances it's a cycle life is a cycle that is the whole vedantic view things come and go but remember the cycle means it will turn again and once it turns again you'll find the new colors taking place of the old so life is a dance of colors enjoy each color of the rainbow don't get stuck onto one situation keep your mind flexible and flexibility means a softness of being a roundness of being an ability to be able to be completely receptive no matter what comes that is true prayer prayer is what prayer is does not mean asking that is not the vedantic connotation the vedic connotation of prayer no it is simply witnessing and witnessing means you are able to witness whatever is going on so the witnessing state is a receptive state it is the state of drashta and in that state of drashta you can attain to shruti you can reflect you can see yourself reflected in pure consciousness You see in an old analogy they used to say that when the moon is in the sky and it has rained you can see the reflection of the moon in many puddles but the moon remains the same there's only one moon while on earth if you look in the puddles you'll find millions of moons but the moon is one so that way understand that the 
unchanging reality is one. It is only our illusion that it is in many forms. Yes, that is the wonder of the world. It is in many forms. It looks to us like it's in many forms. But if you identify with that oneness behind all things, then you become receptive to its energy. You don't get lost in those many other reflections. You become receptive to that highest energy and you find that that inexhaustible source of higher energy is also in you. And when you realize that, you feel a great sense of self-power, strength, might, bal, what we call in Sanskrit, bal. And you're throbbing, you're pulsating with that energy, you're dancing with that energy. And when your life becomes this dance of energy, what can't you achieve? So the Ashtavakra Gita really takes us not only on a very mystical spiritual journey, but also tells us how to be more rooted, strong, powerful in whatever we do, in whatever we undertake, and that way live a far more contented life also.